because of what was done to you, woe to those. It's worse of those who cause these little ones to sin. Who are these little ones? Innocent. Not just children, innocent. Those who don't know. Those who are innocent. They don't know better. They, woe to you who plot and pray on the innocent. Woe to you. Woe to you who come into church because it's Easter and say, I'm going to find me something today. Because I need a church girl. The devil is a lie. The, I said the, the devil is the lie. You that came to the right place today. Woe to you. Every wolf, every fox that's trying to spoil the vine of the children of God. Today be scattered. Borrow tombs. You're in a spiritual escape room. <laughs> Y'all know what those are? It's, it's a real popular thing. I can't really do it because closed spaces make my mind do stuff. I'll be like, what's happening? What's happening? I need a way of escape. That's what he said he'll give me. But they, there's things out now called escape rooms. And they lock you in this room. And you got to find your way out by using clues or something like that. How many of you ever been to one? Ever been to an escape room? God bless your ministry. I don't have the constitution. I would be sitting there, let me out. <laughs> let me out. That's what I would do. But some of us today, that's what we're like. We look around our lives and we realize, I'm in something I don't know how to get out of. I'm in a place I, I don't see a way out. In fact, the doorway is sealed. See, that's where the, the military and the Sanhedrin didn't really get it. Because they came and they said to Pilate, we need to make sure this place is secure. And they sealed the tomb. They didn't just roll the stone. They sealed it. That means they put material to make it no way for him to get out. And that is solid material. I'm not talking about you putting a little drapery there and say, well, I don't think he can get through this. No, they put concrete, they put stone, they put brick and mortar, whatever it took. They said, seal it. Oh, just in case the disciples try to steal his body at night. Because he did have those kind of disciples. Somebody say borrow tomb. Borrow tombs. You're in a borrowed tomb and you realize I'm in a, like an escape room. I don't know how to get out of this pack. I've been trying. I've been praying. I've been seeking God. I've been, I've been fasting. I'm, I'm in something. That, it's not even something I asked for. It's borrowed. Borrowed tomb. But I came to encourage you today. That because it's a borrowed tomb, it means it's temporary. Because it's a borrowed tomb, it means it's temporary and subject to change. In other words, if it means it's subject to change, it doesn't mean it might change. It means it's submitted to change. In other words, it has to change. Borrowed to this thing that's going on in my life. I don't really know how I got here, but I thank you, God, that I don't got to stay here. Sit down, sit down, sit down. I, I, I got to read this. I got to read this. Woo! Matthew 27, go back there, 62. On the next day, which followed the day of preparation, the chief priests and Pharisees gathered together to Pilate, saying, Sir, we remember while he was still alive, how that deceiver. They're talking about Jesus. They're telling Jesus, or telling 
Pilate that Jesus is a deceiver. But the funny thing is, that wasn't what they had above his cross. Let me give you some history. When you were crucified in Roman custom, they would take and write on a piece of wood or pallet or some type of plate what your crime was. And they put it on your cross. So the one on his left had his crime and an actual crime. Let's say burglary, robber, thief. That was above the one on his left. And then the one on his right, murderer. Murderer. Just killing folk. Murderer. Valid crimes. But above Jesus. It didn't say deceiver. It said king of kings. The king of the Jews. In other words, they were trying to convict him for who he really was. Some of you have not felt freedom to be who you really are. But today the spirit of the resurrection comes to declare over your life freedom to be you, boo. It didn't say, it didn't say deceiver, because maybe we could take that, you know, it's liar. We could take it, okay, that's a crime, bet. We got thief, we got murderer, deceiver. Makes sense. Not with Jesus. <laughs> Look at somebody and say, guess what? With Jesus, sometimes it don't make sense. <laughs> Because God has to move past your natural mind to get you to work in the supernatural. The devil meant it for bad, but God turned it around for good. Above the name, above the head of Jesus read the king of the Jews. In other words, the king of kings and lord of lords. I said it last week, he's coming back with a tat on his robe and on his thigh that reads king of kings and lord of lords. Oh, so they called him a deceiver, but that's not what the, that's not what the plaque said. King of kings, king of the Jews. And he said, after three days, I will write, rise. So this is the Sanhedrin, the Pharisees going to Pilate saying, hey, that deceiver said that in three days, he will rise. Therefore, Command that the tomb be secure. This is his sealing call. Oh, I hear you, Holy Ghost. He, he said, he said, command, he said, command that the tomb be secure until the third day. Like if we can get to the fourth day, we out of the, the red. Like we we'll get through it. Let's just get to the fourth day. Let's make sure it's sealed. Oh, lest his disciples come by night and steal him away and say to the people, he has risen from the dead. So that'll be the last deception. And that'll be worse than the first. And so Pilate wasn't paying attention to them from the jump. Because you read the story, Pilate was upset from the jump. And Pilate received a word from his wife. All the husbands said amen. You better listen to your wife and some stuff. She walks in the spirit of God. And if she don't, it's your fault. Pastor and I preach on that together. I can't do that by myself. I need my man right here. <laughs> Pilate was done. He said, I'm tired of these, these, these Sanhedrin and Pharisees. And they just, they confused. They don't know what they're doing. It's getting on my nerves. And he washed his hands with them, gave them over, gave Jesus over. And here again, he's like, I, I, you have a guard. Work with it. You have a guard. Go your way. Make it as secure as you know how. Pilate said, I've given you what you got. And here they are. Jesus, in what's considered like an escape room, borrowed tomb. Say borrowed tomb. They thought 
It was about security. But they didn't understand that this was about prophecy. Because the word spoke the word. Jesus, before any of this went down, stood and said, he answered and said, destroy this temple. And in three days, I'll raise it up. They were sitting in the issue is they had their mind on the brick and on the wood and on the temple that they worship but what he understood is that his body was a temple of the Holy Ghost and even though this situation looked dead the spirit of God quickened I gotta go Jesus answered and said to them, destroy this temple and in three days I will raise it up. And they got mad and said, blasphemy. He's talking about the temple, the temple, the temple, the holy place. And Jesus looked at them and said, no, wrong temple. Somebody say borrow tombs. The enemy thinks it's about increasing security around your tomb. He thinks it's about Send more temptation. Send more deceit. Talk more lies. Make them follow this person. Send more. Increase patrols, in other words. I came to tell somebody today, the enemy knows your tomb is borrowed. I don't think you do. The enemy knows your tomb is borrowed. And I believe the Sanhedrin and the Pharisees knew it too. Because they said Joseph of Arimathea came and got him. And put him in his own tomb. Could you imagine when Joseph finally went to be with the Lord being buried in the same tomb that Jesus... Just imagine it. The enemy thinks, I got to keep him buried. So he's increasing patrols. He's increasing patrols. Demonic forces. Spirits of wickedness. The enemy's trying to bring more patrols. He said, no, we can't send the wimps for this one. We got to put more patrols. We got to send bigger devils. Why? Because she went to church today. I need bigger devils. See, some of you think you came in here because it's Easter Sunday, but I decree to you that this is the first time and this will continue to be a habit in your life of coming to the house of the Lord. Shout the victory. Oh, she went to church today. I need another patrol. Oh, she read her Bible and didn't fall asleep. Send the patrol. He's increasing patrols because he, he knows that tomb don't belong to you. It's borrowed. The enemy knows it's temporary. And anything that's temporary is subject to change. The Bible declares that this light and momentary affliction cannot outweigh to the glory of God that is about to be revealed. I came to declare to somebody in this house today that light and momentary affliction, that addiction, that trauma, that sin, it cannot compare to the glory of God that is about to be. Woo! Increasing patrols. He's increasing patrols. He's increasing patrols. Because the devil knows it's borrowed. You came in here today in a borrowed tomb. And it's sealed tight. And they got extra guards out there. Because the devil knows what gets you. 
Something my pastor taught me, the enemy would never tempt you with something that never got you. You didn't have a drug problem, he ain't going to bring you drugs. This is deliverance number one. You didn't have a sleeping around problem, he ain't going to bring you a homegirl or a homeboy. The devil will tempt you at your place of weakness because he's a coward. The Bible says that he walks around like a lion, but the truth is he's toothless. The Bible says that at the end of time, we will look and say, is this the thing that deceived? The devil don't got no new tricks. He's not going to bring nothing new to your life. He's going to keep tempting you with the same vice. He's going to keep tempting you with the same tune. All he's doing is adding to the seal. He's just adding to the seal. He's just adding. Woo! I gotta go. Add into the seal. But today, <laughs> today, on Resurrection Sunday, those babies prophesied over somebody today. That borrowed tomb. It's not going to be needed anymore because you're about to get up, get up, get up, get up out of that grave. That tomb that's borrowed, that vice that has haunted your life for years, whatever it is, it's borrowed. And because it's borrowed, you're laying in a borrowed tomb which means it's temporary and i know that this thing looks impossible i know that this thing looks like i can't see my way out but the last time i checked the same spirit that quickened that quickened the mortal body of jesus christ is about to Come on, I said the same spirit. The same. Not a different spirit. Not a fake spirit. Not an evil spirit. The same spirit that quickened the mortal dead body. The same spirit. It looks impossible upped his patrols he's double sealed this thing in fact people going oh god people going to the governor to, to Pilate and say hey we need help we gotta keep him in there people going telling people running talking people got so much to say double seal there's delivering power in this place You've been running from Jesus too long. But it's because you've been in a tomb. We brag about it being empty because Jesus got up. But guess what? Today you getting up. I said, I said, today you getting up. I said, today, today, today you're getting up. The same spirit. Who? that quickened I don't want to be graphic but I need this to hit home if you've ever seen a dead body it is lifeless I don't care if you were light as a feather while you walked around this earth when life leaves you you become heavy Dead bodies are heavy because life has left them. Oh, I feel the Holy Ghost. Intercessors pray. Life has left them. And so they're dead. And there Jesus lay dead. No life. Now I don't want to get into theology and talk about him going to hell, taking the keys, robbing Satan. We'll go into that next year. But right now, I need you to see Jesus. 
Spotless lamb. Spotless lamb. He died for something he didn't do. Dead, heavy. Heavy. In a borrowed tomb. <laughs> that a rich Joseph put him in. Not like his dad. His earthly dad. This Joseph was rich. I believe he was led of the Spirit of God to go and inquire of the body. And they took him and they laid him in the tomb. They laid him in the tomb for me and for you. And Mary and the other Mary, the Bible says they sat opposite that tomb. <laughs> Just looking. I believe they were anticipating because they were there in John 2 when he said destroy this temple and in three days I'll, wait, I'll raise it up they were there they, they heard him say so they were anticipating if I gotta sit here for three days I'm gonna watch my savior get up Ooh. if I gotta sit here if I got to pray more, if I got to come to church every time the door opens, if I got to read more, whatever, whatever I got to do, I'm going to see this resurrection. He's, he's not getting up without me. Oh, I feel the whole, he's, he's not, he, they sat there. And the Bible says that early, while some translation says before the noon day was dawning. In other words, it was dark. It was dark. Some of you don't need to be afraid of the dark. Hey, 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 stop being afraid of the dark. I'm not talking about night lights and bad dreams. I'm talking about stop being afraid of the dark. God has called you into the dry and dark places to win souls for the glory of God. Stop being afraid of the dark. Why? Because Jesus... Wow, before the noon day was dawning, the sun hadn't come up yet. The Bible says, Spirit of the Lord, big angel, came. And rolled away the stone. I believe this is not the Lord talking this is Paul talking what does that mean it's my opinion I believe that the stone had to roll away and then the Spirit of God quickened his body and then he got up why <laughs> because for God to set him free for God to set you free he had to make the way to escape some of you have been afraid to allow the Spirit of God to deliver you out of that borrowed tomb to quicken your body to quicken your spirit because you don't see a way out but today by the Spirit of God he He's rolling, he's rolling away the stone. He, he, he's rolling. I'm sorry, I feel this thing. I'm sorry. He, he's rolling away the stone. So when the Spirit of God hits your life, you go look up and see that's my way out and you go cut that's my way out that's my way out come on come on come on that's my way out. 
That's my way out. That's my way out. He's rolling away the stone. So the Spirit of the Lord is going to hit your butt. You haven't seen your way out. You haven't seen your way out. You're in a borrowed tomb. You're in a borrowed tomb. But you haven't seen your way out. Today, the Spirit of God is sending a big angel. Oh, angelic intervention over your children, over your husband, over your wife. Angelic intervention. He, he's sending a big angel. And every patch every guard every seal cannot compare against the glory of the almighty God he's about to touch your life and you're going to get up you've been dead too long You've been dead too long. In fact, some of you haven't been dead. You've been buried alive. You've been, and now you're losing oxygen. You don't even know what to do. Oh, the Spirit of God is rolling away the stone. A dead body. Jesus, see him, see him, see him. Wrapped, the Bible says, in pure white linen. He's there, he's laying dead. He gone to hell, robbed it, conquered. And he's just sitting there, laying there. The Bible says, the Spirit of God quickened. 